Hello Mac Warriors and welcome to another episode of the Build of the Week. Today we will take a deeper look at the X5, which is the Cicada Hero variant. And as always, I will talk about the loadout first and we will have a look at the Mac Lab. And later on I've got two amazing games where I'll discuss what this build is all about and what this Mac is able to do. So let's start with the loadout and then we will get into the games. So here it is, it's the X5, it's the Hero Cicada and the first thing you will notice is that it has a very compact design. It mainly consists of an upper body and legs. And if we look from the side, we have arms, they have no underarms, but they shield a lot, a big portion from the side torso. So it's about half or even more of the side torso. And when we look from the front, we will also see that the side torsos and the center torso are pretty evenly distributed so that if you st twist your torso a bit, you will have a good defensive capability here. So the problem is that the legs are yeah, a bit big, but if we go over here, we can see that this one has very good structure quirks. So it has uh, 12 on the center torso, uh, left torso, right torso 10, left arm, right arm 12, and left leg, right leg again plus 10. Uh, the other quirks are amazing too, uh, especially the weapon quirks. We have energy range plus 10%, energy cooldown plus 10%, and energy heat generation plus 15%. And on top of that, the missile velocity plus 10% and missile cooldown plus 25%. That is really, really good. So let's look at the Mac Lab and then I'll tell you what I put into it. Now the Cicada X5 is the only variant which can carry short range missiles or missiles at all. So I put two of the SRM6s into it because I wanted to abuse the high missile cooldown. I wanted to put out as many rockets in a very short amount of time as possible. So I got the SRM6s because I wanted to yeah, have some punch here. Now I've got four medium lasers because the medium laser is a very good overall roundup weapon. It's really amazing when you compare the uh, heat to the damage output, to the tons it uses, to the slots. So that's, that's a very, very balanced weapon. And yeah, we, not, we need to get close or we want to get close. And therefore these medium lasers are uh, yeah, our workhorses here. I've got an XL300, which brings this one to 130 kph, which I find is quite enough. You could go for a bigger engine. I saw builds where the SRMs were dropped to SRM4 or SRM2 uh, with a bigger engine, but I find this is pretty okay. And I want to have, as I said before, a lot of punch on the battlefield. Now I've got three tons of ammunition and my rule of thumb is for every four tubes, get one ton of ammo. So we have 12 tubes of missiles here. So divided by four makes three tons of ammunition. That's it. So what else do we have? We have modules. Uh, I've got radar deprivation because I want to run between cover a lot and then radar deprivation helps. And for the rest, I got SRM cooldown and SRM range because I consider these as my main weapons and medium laser cooldown as the module for my backup weapon. So no second mech module here because this one is mobile enough to just find the spots and I, th I don't think that any other modules would be helping here. So I've got a UAV because I want to get maybe behind the enemy or close by and then tell my friends where the enemy is and a cool shot to yeah, dissipate some heat when the situation gets tight. And that's it for the build, I think. It's time to hit the battlefield. All right, first game of the day. We are playing Frozen City and we are playing Assault. And speaking of Assault, I'm playing the guard dog for this Assault here. The dire wolf, he covers the canyon while my team is advancing. And I'm staying close just to make sure that no one just runs behind him and gets an easy kill. But this build is made for skirmish and now I'm trying to get to the front line. So I try to be useful because staying here has no point at the moment and therefore I'm just going in. But I'm not going to the to the front line just straight up to the enemy. I'm trying to get behind them because this one is very very good for distracting the enemy and playing some hit and run guerrilla tactics just to yeah, split them apart and drive some fear into their hearts. Target and therefore I'm trying to get their attention. I want to poke a bit and then run away. 
and maybe I can find some targets which will follow me and then my team can push and have an easy brawl. So we've got a Kodiak over here and I poked him with my lasers and as all of you might know when you are playing a skirmisher just don't go in at the same place twice. Just find another spot to go in, uh, maybe target another enemy and then try to run around and be here and there but yeah don't be predictable. And as you could see I managed to get two salvos of my SRMs off. That cooldown is really really good. So that is a good damage dealing weapon here. So I'm trying to get that Kodiak more distracted. I pop a UAV just to tell my team that there is some enemies around. And now I'm switching targets because I want to support my team. So I think I got the Kodiak to cover and now I just want to help killing the rest that has ground into my team. And that is by the way the best situation you could possibly get when you are playing a skirmisher. When the enemy is targeting your teammates, you can freely pick your targets and especially in this build you can deal a lot of damage without getting any return fire. And yeah, you can help out where you are needed. So I'm going to the flank because my team is pushing now here and you can see the amazing mobility. I'm just staying in constant motion just to be a hard to hit target and meanwhile I am getting a lot of damage out to the armor of my enemy. Of course you have to be a bit careful, especially when you're getting stuck or when you're running into a sold max or a solid firing line, then you just have to immediately retreat and pick yourself another target. So this one is perfect. It has a rear open and I'm taking him down. Now it's time for me to go in again and I'm going into their flanks because I don't want to face the king crap but I saw there was another lonely assault here and I wanted to distract him as much as possible so that he can't get back into the fight. Got some damage on him and now I'm running and hoping that he will follow me. Meanwhile I can still fire at that Viper over here, it has an open back and now I'm trying to get a kill because if I'm taking him down that would be good and I overheat. Please avoid that. If you're running a medium which is very fast and has not that much armor, try to avoid overheating. That's, that's very, very important. It wasn't a big deal because my team was brawling very good and there were only some lonely targets left. And see what I'm doing here? I'm shooting the ass of the Atlas because it is the hitbox for the rear torso. It's the rear center torso and I'm trying to get behind him and get that kill. He is doing a good torso twisting here, but it's the last enemy and I think he will be taken down in a second and my team did a good job and I even won a supply cache. Hooray! So that was the first game and it was really really fun to play. I was, I was really excited when I was in the game and let's see the end score. Yeah, 775 damage, 2 killing blows, 8 assists, 5 components destroyed. Let's see this one. I dealt second most damage in the game. That was amazing and I think I did a really good job. So let's dig into the next game and see how this will go down. Alright, second game. We are playing the Mining Collective. We are playing Assault again and in this game I am using my map awareness and my mobility to help my team out and be there when I am needed. So I'm trying to scout here a bit and I am running into a Wolfhound here and this mech is very good for chasing light mechs or other medium mechs. You have a lot of firepower in this mech and there was a Shadow Cat over there so I'm just trying to get as much damage in as possible and then run away, pop a UAV and try to get out again. That was just right in time and now I have to wait for my team to follow up but I can still peek because this spot here it provides a lot of cover and I'm pretty safe and as you can see my UAV provided a lot of vision, there are LRMs flying and that was a great deal. So now we can apply some pressure on them and remove some armor and have a big advantage for the late game. We have a Nova over there who got cocky and I think he wanted to get behind our lines but now is in direct line of fire for me and we've got also some backup from my team. Let's quickly take him down and there is one battle mag less on the battlefield. Alright, I even got the kill and now it's time to go back to the assaults. It seems that they are lagging behind so I'm trying to support them and play the guard dog for them. Maybe there are some lights running around. Alright, we've got a lot of guys incoming from Caesar 3 and I'm not facing them directly. I want to go to the long way, the long circle around through our base because if I just ran into this position they would have taken me down and that would result in a quick death for me. I don't want that, so play it safe. I am quick enough 
and I probably will be there in time. And when you take a look at the minimap, you will see that the rest of our force is flanking them. So this is a very good situation. The problem is that our fatties are in the tunnel and I don't want to go in there. That would be a death trap for me. And at this point actually I saw there was a blip on the minimap and it's a light mech who tries to get behind our main force. So we are now dealing with him very quick because we want to keep our fatties safe. We want them to focus on the main force and we are covering their backs now. There's also a timber wolf and I want to drive him off and deal as much damage as possible. I know that there are some structures to hide, so I'm going in, drop some SRMs to his face and another salvo and then try to get behind that block. I fired a cool shot because I really want to take him down and I was sure that my buddy over there will follow me so that we can take that timber wolf out of the game and again keep the backs of our assaults safe. Yes, I took the risk of overheating because I wanted that timber was really, really bad. That one taken down was really important, so that was probably not that big of a deal. But it seems that our main force is falling apart. Yeah, everyone is on retreat and I'm trying to support here now. We've got another timber wolf who seems to be heavily damaged. I want to get another shot to his back and I overheat, which was terrible. Now that assault has some free shots on my back, as you can see, my center is open in the rear, my side torso as well, and there's another dude coming from the top. It's a Viper, which is a very scary target at this point. I try to run around him and get some shots to his center, but unfortunately I was taken down, and that's it. But anyway, that game is pretty good so far, so we have 8 and 5, and We've got it. We've totally got it in the back because now there's a lot of damaged enemies on the battlefield. As you can see, 10 and 5 now, a lot of overheating going on. My team is fighting desperately and is fighting like wolves here. But as you can see, 11 and 5 and there is the last one already lagged. He has nowhere to run and he will be taken down in a second. Great game everyone. It was a lot of fun playing this and I think I again did a really good job supporting my team where I was needed. So let's see the end score and see how much damage I dealt. This time it was 653 and 3 killing blows, 5 assists and 4 components destroyed. As I said before, this mech totally wrecks robots. The capability to carry missiles combined with the amazing speed and the 4 medium lasers, it's just amazing. So if you want to rebuild it, I highly recommend it. This is my favorite cicada. And that's it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, don't forget to leave a rating, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I hope to see you on the battlefield, everyone. Goodbye.